afterwards or in between, you can say, okay, you don't want to have that recorded and then we just delete it. Super. Yeah? All yeah. right, great. <laughs> um, so how do we want to start? Maybe, so you had the demand and my question is, what would you like to know? What do you know? And what need to? What do you need to know? What is? What would you like to know? So where are you? Yeah, <laughs> it started with kind of a, a search for resources um, and and wanting to also see what's the state of this conversation out here for people who are really focusing on it. So my work is largely around masculine feminine dynamics, mm -hmm. but I do other collaborative work. You know, it's all kind of about um, personal transformation and you can't get to any of this without understanding boundaries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in some ways, any of us who are coaching sort of in the sphere of personal transformation, personal development are working with boundaries, right? but it's not my primary focus. Oh, right. And so I'm finding that, you know, and I've worked with it in the zone of conscious sexuality, like kind of applied boundaries. I do retreats, so I do a lot of like agreement setting. So it's something that's always coming up, mm -hmm. but I'm like, there has to be, like for the people that this is what, what they're really thinking about, what, what are they thinking and how are they approaching boundaries differently? than those of us who are doing it in this kind of integrated way. Mm -hmm. So what I'm finding is for a lot of my clients, especially now that um, life is more confined, right? Like life is more contained. There's not the kind of um, circumstantial escape that's possible, right? Like I don't need to navigate this boundary, I'll just leave the house. <laughs> right I'll just do something else or you know it'll work itself out but now there's like the compression around relationships so people are really seeing mm. where they don't have good boundaries where they don't have boundaries that support like their own time to think boundaries mm. with their kids right I work closely with uh, I have a, a year-long project around surrender which is really kind of getting into the deep feminine. And this is probably the place where I was most noticing. It's an all women's group. Um, and they're looking for things like space for intuition, right? Like uh, self-led knowing. And you don't get that mm -hmm. if you don't have good boundaries. Like if people are always like in your physical space, in your brain space, um, it's really hard to kind of get grounded with self in that way. And so it had me looking for resources, resources and conversations. And, you know, I know that some of the ones that are kind of go to like the boundaries book, right? A lot of people find the language inaccessible because it has this very particular Christian disposition. Right? And while the principles are great, I was like, this conversation has to be happening mm -hmm. in other frameworks and with other language that might be more accessible to my audience. Mm. So that's a really kind of long preamble to how I find myself here. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 see how I how I kind of fit in in different ways. Um, so the first thing that I became aware of is the way how you use the word boundary. Mm -hmm. And when I talk about boundaries um, and and many people use the word boundary differently. Mm -hmm. I, I define the word boundary in relationship to limits. And some people use the word limits for boundaries and some people use the word boundaries for limits. Mm -hmm. yeah. I use the word boundaries and limits in a specific way. That does not mean that this is the right way. Yeah. So some mm -hmm. people use the word limit as boundary and boundary as limit and some people have the same meaning with with these words mm -hmm. so it's literally i i create like a language about that that people can articulate about that what it is for them or what they mean about that mm -hmm. and um yeah so 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 the word the, the way how i define boundary has pretty much to do with 
with empowerment mm -hmm. and has to do with something that is beyond overpowering oppression and obedience what is literally this typical way that we have all kind of to a degree in our nervous system going along with stuff from somebody else like an authority that tells us what's right and what's wrong what we have to do what which what we should and what we shouldn't so so i've been kind of digging into the uh, in Stephen Porter's work, uh, the Polyvagal Theory, who mm -hmm. is, the, and you might have heard about him. So he is somewhere in, I think he's in Chicago still, somewhere in, in Illinois. And, and he is a, he's a professor there in the University for uh, Neurophysiology, and he developed the Polyvagal Theory in the last 20 years, what has been coming out in a very clear um, way for people to rethink our patterns of behavior related mm -hmm. to survive and how we behave with the world. Mm -hmm. And this is fantastic. So everybody can look that up. And What's his last name, Matthias? Stephen Porges, Dr. Stephen Porges, the Polyvagal Theory. And, um, and I just want to share, I share the first um, map with you. Um, it's that one here. Can you see that? Oh, yes, I can. Okay. This is so fantastic because, so the way how he digged out is, it's a very complex theory that he brought up, but he, um, uh, he just made that very simple and very easy and clear. And one morning I just woke up and, and so I just attended a workshop with him in London a few years ago and I woke up and just like, so that means we have either in our nervous system where we're feeling not safe or where we're feeling safe right mm -hmm. and that the nervous system is hierarchy structured from the top to the bottom where our top behavior our, our top structure of the nervous system is on the vagus nerve related the social engagement system so it's this I just, um, can I just make it bigger someone probably can Yes, there must be a full screen um, option somewhere. Uh, enter full screen. It's the third one from the bottom. Did you see it? Enter. In your list? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I have to get out of that. I just want to make it, make it bigger on the slide. Here we go. That's it. So, so that, that he is div dividing the social engagement system, what is literally everything based on our vagus nerve activity. And that's how we engage with people like we, you know, we have face-to-face uh, -face contact, we have an introduction to each other, we talk, and you hear on the tone of voice and how people express themselves if they are um, friendly or if they are in a form of a threat. So that uh, he talks about something that calls the neuroception where your nervous system can detect if somebody feels safe in your environment or you feel safe with them or you feel not safe. Mm -hmm. And that can with every person in every situation differently. For example, when you're in a workshop with a bunch of strangers, your nervous system is literally in a, in, a, in a place of an alert if you don't know that you can make choices in there. So if you think you have to go along with everything that people tell you, then you're probably constantly in an alert place where you actually scared. Mm. So he, he determined that, that the social engagement system, the vagus nerve activity is literally determined if you're safe with other people or not. So. Uh -huh. And I want to show you the safe side, uh, the not safe side first, so, so where power over and oppression and, and manipulation and stories and lies is. So everything that people use in a social manner to um, kind of get in a hidden way their needs met somehow. So when we can't get ourselves out of a situation, our nervous system goes down into the sympathetic 
um, a place what is the danger so what is fight flight so physical activation to get off or to fight to protect ourselves mm -hmm. yeah so you see that when people are kind of just like hyper nervous and that's like insecure and are afraid of they are in the sympathetic state of fight and flight so they're not safe even if we tell them they're safe their nervous system tell, tells them something completely different if they don't know they have choices and they have to say yes and aim into everything good luck you will not get anything out of them right so and when the nervous system is kind of getting overwhelmed by this fight flight situation because the metabolic can only process a certain amount of um, action uh, the nervous system is going down in the lowest form of the reptilian brain or brainstem activity what is the parasympathetic what is completely shut down it's shock faint or people freeze literally mm. yeah and in this place uh, this is where where, where people just like dissociate they're gone and so the way how he determined that is that this is that this is a well structured survival mechanism in the nervous system and when people not really capable of creating safety and connection in their social engagement system the nervous system is responding on this side what we can see everywhere in society where people are afraid of losing their foundation of existence mm -hmm. So society and people going back on survive on the not safe side. So when, when we talk about safety and connection, he was actually um, digging it out that when we are safe in a way, when we create agreements, when we can speak about our limits and boundaries, when we can speak about what is okay and what's not okay and for how long and what's going to happen, a part of the brain is switched on in the neocortex in the frontal lobe where we can make these choices and that's switched off on the not safe side but when that's switched on we can create agreements that allows us to thrive and to expand and and to show more of ourselves. Mm. and when we create an agreement then we can go into the sympathetic but on the safe side and the sympathetic on the safe side is everything that is physical activation like yoga, dance, sport or work yeah, mm -hmm. or running, everything that's fun going into mobilization. Mm -hmm. And when we exhaust ourselves in this place, then we just going as well into the, into the dorsal vagus and the parasympathetic, what he calls immobil immobilization. I call that the bliss state. So where you rest, sleep, and meditate is a place of rejuvenation, like the shivasana after yoga. Mm -hmm. And that's, a, that's actually one of the most delicious places everybody wants to go in with themselves and with others. And that just needs this super amount of safety. And just like, and then you see here other arrows, they're just like uh, changes of neurological stages. So you can go from this place here easy into the freeze and shock space. Or you can go from here easy into, into fight or flight. Um, mm -hmm. But you cannot go back from fight and flight into this place. It's the most vulnerable place in the nervous system. And you cannot go from faint into immobilization on the safe side. You always has to, has to go through, for example, fight flight or physical activation to get the nervous system the limbic system the emotions the feelings out of the body and then you can relax back in a safe space right. it's a great map right it's a great map <laughs> so 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 this map is literally where so when i work with this map i show people the neurological stages and how important they are to acknowledge and to have this internalization of expressing what they, how they feel and where they are at. And when they're not safe, sorry, then you're not safe. That's totally okay. So we don't need to change that. So enjoy being not safe here. And if you need to leave, then completely take care of yourself. Hmm. So you can interrupt me anytime and ask questions, please. <laughs> <If you want. laughs>
<laughs> yes, you saw the, the question descend. And I just experienced this last night with an, an online group that I run, right? In, in any community where you're a facilitator, at least I find in any community where I'm a facilitator, I'm trying to create this baseline of safety mm. so that people can get into um, not quite the, the bliss state in, in here because it's more like active sharing, but it's like a kind of safe vulnerability that creates the space for transformation. Yeah. yeah. And one of the tricks is that, yes, people need the ability to say no and not have to be on the AMEN program, but if enough people are saying no, then it, it actually reduces the safety for everyone involved. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll work with that. If people can't say no, I don't trust their yes. Uh, if, if people don't have, a, if, if they don't have a solid no, so how can I trust you that you have a solid yes? That's, that's really difficult. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. And, and that's a principle that I, that I completely understand. And so I'll give you like more of a micro example. Yeah, please. We're just doing some, um, some rounds of like sentence stems, right. Where you just complete the, the, the prompt. It's usually pretty simple. Um, and I use one to just kind of uh, presence what's in the space and it's before we move on, I need to say this, right. Mm. There's always something. Right. There's always something running through your brain, something mm -hmm. that you can share. And I give people the opportunity, if they need to, to opt out. Mm -hmm. right? But it should happen really kind of according to, and we have some other agreements about playing full out, challenging yourself, right? But you being the ultimate arbiter of that, like each individual being the ultimate arbiter. And I had a situation last night where by the third person who said, oh, I don't have anything to share here, right? The people who did have things to share started to contract, mm. right? And started to say, oh, I don't have anything to share here. So mm -hmm. then I had to sort of pause and teach into that experience. But it, it made me think about that line where if enough people are exercising their, um, sort of right or agreement not to participate then it reduces the safety of participation overall does that make so, sense yes absolutely yes yeah 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 totally yeah 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 thanks for that um so why i'm showing you this picture here is that on the survival side this is this is where people need to be capable of saying no, what is happening. Mm -hmm. If they're not capable of saying no, what is happening to them, mm -hmm. then they're to a degree, even if it's a subtle degree, they are on a survival pattern. Mm -hmm. And they're not wrong or bad, but there's no thriving. That's just, you know, going along with stuff. So, and the capability of saying no is, is vital here. And, you know, I've been working with some women in in US, specifically when it comes to sexual encounter with men, that women have said, just like, you know, saying no is more dangerous than actually going along with that. Mm -hmm. And I was just shocked. I, I could not believe and I, and I felt as a, you know, white male privileged kind of person, never sexually assaulted, kind of just like the first time how difficult that is for some people saying no mm -hmm. and that it's dangerous saying no and that that going on a survival strategy is the best way to actually going along with stuff so and that was a hard cookie for me to swallow because i could not say anything to that <sighs> it's, it's, I, I, yeah, yeah. go ahead i'm sorry no, no, please say. I, I was going to say, you know, this comes up in the kind of work of masculine feminine relating. Um, and I'd be very curious sort of how you approach that because of course that's, well, I won't say of course, I'll say I understand that to be an internal system of safety and an internal level of understanding, right? Because yeah. 
generally that's like a kind of encoded like bioevolutionary response right yes. where yeah. women are literally like the smaller weaker sex right there is a there's a way that we're looking to have our physical safety provided for for right and not to have that potential provider turn his power against us yes. right yeah. so it just comes from some basic biological bi bioevolutionary encoding but we also have levels of choice in that, right? Once we, yes. once we yeah. become more yeah. conscious animals. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the way how I can relate to not capable of saying now is a situation where we're all in, you know, there is this, this lockdown, this isolation, and we are just like, um, um, there's, a, there's a, a source or a power telling us something and we have to behave in a certain way and my entire body knows this says just like no but there's nobody and nothing i can say no to mm -hmm. but I, I have this this no in my body and this no this is what i say to people your capacity of saying no is to is your capability of protect your boundaries yeah so so when i talk about boundaries a boundary is something that is based on an um i've written that down in my somebody asked me the other day so boundaries are based on values and inner so inner rights and that have have to do with how we internalize a situation and it's a capacity of just being capable of saying no and stop it's it's a healthy way of protection. Mm -hmm. And the way how I see that is in form of a duality that the opposite of a boundary is actually having a desire. Oh, so interesting. So we also teach these in relationship to each other. So I can't wait to hear what you have to say. So, so the desire, I would just put that aside and just stick with the boundaries in this place of that your capacity of saying no is your capacity of expressing your boundaries. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go to the next um, uh, next one. I think it's down up here. Is that one? So, oh. um, <laughs> so when I talk about boundaries, it's this thing. So let's say this is this is you, and that's everybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that. Um, what is inside of this box, this is what you have a right to and a responsibility for. Mm -hmm. And that's everything that um, belongs to you that you have ownership of. So your desires, your feelings, your thoughts, what you want, your body, your emotions, your beliefs, and your limits. Mm -hmm. And so this, this box, this is literally, um, um formed by this line and this is what i call the boundaries and this this belongs to me alone that has it has nobody else any rights to like it belongs to you and anybody else in the world mm -hmm. that that's just my right and my responsibility taken care of and and neither i have the right to tap in somebody else's box or base or nobody else has the right to tap into mine except I allow them. So on what I call this space in between here, this is what I call the relationship. Mm -hmm. And the relationship is based on the agreements that people have. Mm -hmm. And without, without an agreement, there are no determined limits. So the limit is literally de clear, determined by what have people agreed upon. And that is determining the relationship. So if there is no agreement, there is no limit, there's literally no relationship. And then people doing all kinds of stuff with each other without having created any kind of agreement. And then they wonder why their boundaries getting crossed because it feels like somebody has just like touched them against their will or somebody has spoken to somebody else without um, having really asked if they just want to hear that. Mm -hmm. 
So one person feels like they're doing something beneficial for another person. The other person has not said yes to and feels their boundary crossed. But because there's no agreement, there were no limits. Therefore, it felt like their boundary got crossed. But the, the fact is, when people have limits, then they can be clear about where their boundaries are. And then they know, okay, my boundaries feeling is, is being crossed here. I have a limit and I have to express that and say, okay, this is how far you can go and not further. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of the, the difference between the uh, yeah, limits and, and, uh, and, and boundaries, the way how I use it in my work. And from there, how I create the relationship, the agreement. Uh, that's, an, that's another piece I would like to share with you. Any, do you have any questions there? Yeah, Please. well, I'm excited. What a great diagram. And <laughs> I just was looking to, to kind of put the distinction between boundaries and limits um, in my own language to make sure that I understand it. So mm -hmm. like what I see in the diagram is that for you, limits are just one component to boundaries. Yes? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I understand that. Can you just... Uh... Sure. So in the kind of box of boundaries, mm -hmm. okay, we have all these things. We've got beliefs, body, emotion, but limits are one of the things that's, that's in there. Right? Yes. It's a component of boundary, but yeah. a limit is a smaller thing than a boundary. Um, no, I would say, so the way how I, um, just, I can, So the way how I see that is that in this yeah. box is what you have a right to and a responsibility for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and this is what I call, that's your individual base. Mm -hmm. So, and in your in individual base, what you have a right to and a responsibility for is that you have your desires and what you want. Mm -hmm. And that can be based on your beliefs or your emotions or mm -hmm. your feelings mm -hmm. or your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that can be all part of your internalized experience. Mm -hmm. But if another person with their own rights and their own responsibilities, if they're having a desire and a want and they say, um, um, I want to come over and uh, use your bathtub. It's their right and, uh, and, and, and to have this desire. Mm -hmm. But you have as well the responsibility for your limits to say, mm -hmm. oh, that's really good to want. I really appreciate your desire that you just fancy my bathtub, but no, I'm not sharing my bathtub with anybody. I'm sharing my bathtub only with somebody else. So thank you for asking. I appreciate your uh, request. And my bathtub is not available. I have a limit here. Awesome. Yeah? <laughs> yes. So, so that we have a right and responsibility for expressing our limits in there. Mm -hmm. So, um, but if somebody would just come over with their desire of the bathtub and then they're just like jump into somebody else's house into somebody else's um, bathtub that would literally cross a boundary without agreement yes. so but if if this person would say sure just like here's the key whenever you like uh epsom salt is in the cupboard just jump in have it and the person jumps over in the bathtub, there is no boundary crossing. And there's actually, um, within the limits, there is an agreement. And within this agreement, just great, have fun in my bathtub. You can just like swim if you want. Awesome, thank you for that. Okay, does it make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. Okay. So let's talk about limits a little bit more, okay? Yes. Okay, so, oh no, let me stop that one here. I'm going to ask you just a quick question. I know my screen is small, but is there enough light 
in MySpace? Um, yes. Okay. Yes. So now I have all these kind of oh, uh, lines here. Yeah, let's see how I. Um, how do I get rid of them? I haven't tried that. Clear. Clear my drawings. Yes. Oh, Yay. Yeah. It works. Hey. So, you know, I'm just completely Zoom newbie. I just have to learn it. Everything new. I'm really. You're doing great. I've never tried any of these tools. <laughs> so, when I talk about limits, it is that a limit is dependent on somebody else making a request towards me. Mm. Yeah. And so, the first thing is about being capable of negotiating limits is that I have to be capable of saying no. So, so that means that I've just written down some sentence here, but when it comes to a yes, there is a, there is a, a spectrum of limits. And that depends on a what my mood is that depends on with whom that is for how long, what is going to happen. And this is all based on the level of negotiation and agreements and that can start start you from a hell yes i want that too mm -hmm. to a completely fierce no just like i'm not interested go away mm -hmm. so that the limits are still based on somebody else making a request about what they want that i can speak about my limits mm. yeah. otherwise if somebody would just do what they want then my limits are not in the picture and everything that would just interfere in my, in my domain or in my base would feel to me like my boundaries is crossed. So therefore sometimes, sometimes I could say, yeah, I'm not really knowing. I need more information or just I'm curious. Tell me more about that. Or yes, but just only just like five minutes. Um, or just like, no, but um, we can do something completely different. Mm -hmm. yeah? So, so the, the level of negotiation is literally determine what am I willing to do? Mm -hmm. So when I speak about the limits, it's not about what I want. When I speak about the limits, it's about what is it that I am willing to contribute into this dynamic. Right. Yeah, does that make sense? It does, because you're building the space of relationship by articulating yes, right. them. You're building the space of relationship and the relationship is determined the way of engagement and what's going to happen. How do you talk about, Matthias, limits that are true for you regardless of which relationship it is? Good question. I like that. Show you the next one. It is. Um, so I created a model out of that. No, no. Mm -hmm. First of all, I want to show you. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. So when um, let's say here, this, this, this kind of uh, thing is again, the box, right? And in this box, I have embodied my own, limits and boundaries so when so here here is the base so self-care self-love what i'm what i'm aware of then the first level of relationship is that i am responsible for my feelings i'm responsible mm -hmm. for my limits i'm responsible for my thoughts and you are for yours so mm -hmm. i'm responsible for my feeling and you're responsible for your feelings and when I create a relationship with somebody else, and I'm very clear about who I'm having a relationship with in my life, mm -hmm. I make that clear. I'm responsible for my feelings here. And if I feel somebody else is projecting something, I'm aware of that they're not taking responsibility for their feelings. They want to put their feelings in my base and want to make me responsible for how they feel. Mm -hmm. So therefore, my responsibility is as well that I cannot put my feeling in somebody else's base and project on them that they make me feel. So it's a level of radical responsibility 
that I'm taking care of my feelings and so are you. And if you're just trying to make me responsible for how you feel, I can have compassion for what's going on in your body, but I'm not taking responsibility for how you feel. I'm sorry, I can't. So that the first level of response of or the first level of relationship is in agreement. And I have that with, with people I'm engaging with. I'm responsible for my feelings. You're responsible for your feelings. Mm -hmm. So, and then I go from there to the next level is, and, um, and this is what I have created here. It's, it's a little bit similar, like the wheel of consent, but I see it a little bit differently. Can you make it bigger? Absolutely. more a little more yes yeah okay so then i go to the next step is for example with an intimate partner or when i'm in engagement with a partner asking can i have permission to touch you whenever i want however i want and you take care of your limits if you have them so i ask for a holistic permission to touch them mm -hmm. And they say, yeah, sure. And I can take care of my limits, they say. Okay, and you have the same permission. You can touch me with any part of your body, any part of my body, anytime you like, I take care of my limits mm -hmm. if I have them, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if I say no, then you have to take care of your feelings if your feelings getting hurt. If I want to touch you and you say no and my feelings getting hurt, I will take care of that. So I'm not responsible for uh, how you feel you're not responsible for I feel and I can use my body to reach out and make connection with you mm. so this is the second layer and then the third layer is if I want you to do something for me I will ask so if you don't if I don't ask so that, then don't do anything and if you want me to do something for you I will ask and if I don't, uh, or if you don't ask, I do, don't do anything. And if you don't ask, I don't do anything. So I pretty much know who I have this agreement with. Mm -hmm. So if people want something from me to do for them, but they have not asked for it, but they still want it, they're falling into a place of expectation and disappointment because they want an action from me. And I'm just simply not willing to engage in this level. And they freak out. And then they're ending up into this shadow place, what is this underneath here, where they project their feelings, but you should know what I need. <laughs> so, so that this is a very clear distinction of, if you want something, you have to make a request. And if there's no request made, I know there's something going on on this side. I have no contracts with, I have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. So no request, no agreement, no agreements, no limits. And if you feel kind of, sorry, we can have a conversation about what you want and then we can negotiate something. As long as that is not going to happen, you know, I'm not responsible for how you feel. Sorry if you feel bad, but too, too bad for you. So, and then people ask, yeah, but what is that um, the, the level of um, just like just giving a gift? Mm -hmm. And that's the fourth level. So we are all a living gift and we all wants, want to give our gift to the world and to mm -hmm. people around us. Mm -hmm. And this is a very tricky thing. If people giving a gift, it has to be for free with no attachment of anything coming back. Mm -hmm. What you do with it is a choice. It's your choice. If you're kicking it in the rubbish bin, I might feel sad. I take care of my sadness, but I still have giving it because I can, because I have, but I don't want anything from you. Here it is. I provide make the best out of it and if you want to give something back great if don't great so and i created that in a kind of um in a in a, in a pyramidal structure mm -hmm. so that as you see in this one here is that um 
I call that the engagement zone. If two people have an encounter and communicate with each other, it's a very clear thing. It's either your action mm -hmm. and your action is for you or it is your action and it is for somebody else. And if it's your action and it is for somebody else, then you either giving a gift that's for free or the other person has made a request and there's no other things in between. If it's, if it's your action and it's for you, then you have to ask for permission. Hey, can I touch you? Can I borrow your car? Can I go over in your bathtub? Can I lay my head on your shoulder? And if there's not a real agreement between people, then it just needs, and, and this is where it's getting tricky, one person just means it very well and just like want to make connection and want to lean their head on your shoulder. And the other person can feel that immediately as an invasion of their space. Mm -hmm. Because there's no agreement about that. Specifically when you're having a, a, a touch phobic society. <laughs> 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 we all diving into hardcore. <laughs> you just imagine doing that on the subway in New York. I just wanted to lean my head over here. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so, so, so that this, when you're just looking here on top of that one here, this is what I call in this structure, the apex. So the mm -hmm. peak of this, this is like the interpersonal space where we all want to belong and being a gift and having a nice connection. And when, when we have kind of embodied that stuff here, there's kind of an, a personal development possible. This is the way how I work with that, that is developing um, a, a place of real surrender to either my experience or to your action. Um, here to, the, to somebody's action that develops gratitude for either your action for me or my action for myself. It develops an integrity for I know it's my action is for me or it's my action is for you. So integrity mm -hmm. of being really clear about who is it for when I'm in action. Mm -hmm. And generosity says so like I'm giving a gift either to you what you want or I give access to my resources for what you want to do. And from there, this bliss state, the interpersonal state here, this is really easy possible. <laughs> hmm. Okay, a lot of talking, a lot of words. <laughs> Could you go back to the last diagram for a yes, moment? Please. Thank you. Okay. So, so this is what you do. You, you ask me, mm -hmm. you ask me for an action mm -hmm. uh, because you want something. And you ask, okay. can you go back to the other diagram? So yes. it's for you and it's their action is my action. I say, yes, sure, I can. I just have, I have another graphic for you if you want to see that. Would you like yes. that? Okay. <laughs> yes, I would really love that. Okay, that's that one here. Dang it. Dun, 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 dun. No, let's see. Maybe I have another one also. Nope. I can show you here. Um, Okay, do you see it? Yes. I have to make it a little bit smaller that it fits in the place. So that um, so you have the same you have the same box here, the engagement box or the engagement zone, how I call them. Mm -hmm. And everything in here happens within the agreement, so within um, limits within um, desires and and outside if there's no permission then you have this side here somebody is going into an action it's for them 
but they have no permission. And then you have the typical shadows like rape, stealing, the perpetrator, abuse, violation, war. If, you know, we can just like extend that limit, uh, that, that list, because it's just pretty endless. Mm -hmm. And the other side, the opposite side of this list is you have, when you can't say no, so you no, have no boundaries or no limits, then you're going here in the victim space, the enduring, the trauma going along and being passive. And you find this as well in the polyvagal theory back in the surviving side. Kind of the shock or you have people being in constantly fight or in constantly flight. And then, and this is what I've seen in, in many countries and in one of them specifically in US. <laughs> 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 that people are you know they're coming from this place of providing this infinite service and giving something mm -hmm. but not from an altruistic free place they're doing it from a place because they want something right they give to get till they're getting burned out the nice guy the pleaser the mm -hmm. do-gooder yeah and what that is coming with, it comes always with the opposite portion that they want to have an action without saying anything. And that's expectation, exploitation, entitlement, or the freeloader. Wanting other people to do something, to get something. Right, I was thinking about that when you were in the last slide, that when you don't have the clarity of the the integrity piece where you're clear on who is doing the action and who is the action for yeah um then you get into the space of um like the transactionality yes. right yes and it's yeah. sort of yeah. like yeah oh but i did and that was for me but i was giving it to you <laughs> and there's this sort of complex accounting of like yeah yeah i mean the main thing is um, and I would like to bring it with that one to a completion because otherwise I could talk for hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is specifically when it comes to relationship, when people have no really agreements about what's going to happen or they have no really limits about that. So, and specifically in, in um, I would say in heterosexual, normal common relationships is the guy he is a good guy yeah he's nice mm -hmm. he has he just want to he just wants the best for his partner mm -hmm. and she's always frustrated about him because whatever and he he's he's he just want to learn all the tricks and he doesn't want to do all the techniques and then he just doing the course and the workshop and is learning all the good stuff and you go you want to go in action mm -hmm. and providing the right stuff for his partner so he he actually thinks he's here he's doing something and he thinks a partner uh, his partner is here mm -hmm. yeah but she has not asked for it and because she has not asked for it and he's doing it she is actually not on this side of the shadow she's actually thinking he's doing it all for himself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but he's actually doing it for her but because she thinks he's doing it for himself she's mm -hmm. putting herself in this corner and he thinks he is here mm -hmm. when she's putting herself in this corner she puts him in this corner mm -hmm. and nobody's receiving anything so either he has because he has never asked Hey, uh, baby, what would you like? What can I do for you? How would you like me to touch you? He's just doing all the tricks that he learned and she thinks, yeah, great. So he's just doing because he likes it. So I let him doing it and uh, it's not doing much for me. And he's not get it, getting the response that he want to have. So he's doing more and trying to get more out of that. And then she start blaming him and saying, hey, dude, you just do it always for yourself. Can't you do this and that? 
from a place of expectation. And he said, oh, I've done all that all the time for you. And then she said, no, you have done it for yourself. And I was just like, well, no, I've done it for you. It's like, no, I never have asked you. Yeah, well, <laughs> but, <laughs> and then you have the discussion <laughs> at the end of the relationship. <laughs> I did a decade and a half like that, Matthias. Where were you? <laughs> Okay, um, any reflections from your side? Anything that you would like to share? Hmm. Anything you would like to ask? How you yeah. feel? Well, I feel really excited. I, I love seeing a different, um, that's exactly what I asked for. It's exactly what I was seeking is a, a kind of, um, like a new topography mm. for thinking about this. Right? So I'm really excited about like the, the, the new diagrams and structures and ways of thinking about the, the cross. There is a place where my brain hasn't totally grokked the directions of the diagram. Like I understand the pyramid. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I'm, I'm just trying to kind of visually understand like which is the side of permission and the side of, uh, of agreements, mm -hmm. right? Um, visually. So I think, I don't know that I have a question. I think I'm still working on like understanding the nuance of the diagram. Like I understand the concepts. And then as you're talking, I'm reviewing like, okay, so could I figure that out myself? Like if I looked at the diagrams again, would I be able to walk yeah. through it? Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I don't think so, except I give you the last missing piece if you'd like to have it. Oh, <laughs> I love the last <laughs> missing piece. Yes, thank you, please. Okay, let's see where the piece is. I have it, I have it here. Okay. I call that the direct and the indirect route. Or maybe I start with that one here. So, and this is what most people have completely forgotten in their nervous system, that they can go into an action. So this is in the, in the somatic nervous system. So they activate their impulses of action towards feeling pleasure in their skin. Yeah, so when I work with people, I work with them on a, sometimes it needs weeks, that their skin is getting activated, that they actually can touch somebody without giving anything. So that they can touch and feel themselves. Mm -hmm. So they, they are in action and it is for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a, it's a sensual, it's, it's, it's the sensual base of touch and connection. So that it, you know, in, in the early age of development, our social engagement system started to get developed by this specific sensual skin, pleasure-based feeling ourselves on somebody, our parents, our mother, our father, mm -hmm. our siblings, or somebody else. And we learn to compromise that. We learn to throw that out of the window because we think it's more important what we give when we do something than we actually feel when we do something. Mm -hmm. So that doing and feeling, so action and feeling is something that is missing in most people's um, understanding of touch and connection and relationship. Yeah, does that make sense? Totally. Totally. Now we go to the second one. So because people are having layers of shame or they are embarrassed or guilt or fear or judgments when they touching somebody for themselves that they have shut that down when they touching another person that they're looking for the response of the other person mm -hmm. so instead of feeling themselves what i call the direct route they start getting a response from another person to get gratification about their action yeah. So if people don't have this one in place, 
as a foundation. And this is what I call, you know, when we have talked about the base, mm -hmm. what you have a right to and responsibility for, this one needs to be in place there first. Right. If this is not existing in there, this entire thing is just, just like, yeah, it's just mental. It has no, it has no function. So if this one is not existing, this is what people do. They go in an action because this one is just like blocked and they need to get the respond and they're, they're literally dependent on the other person's respond. They're losing themselves in the other person's respond because they cannot feel themselves. Right. That's Which the I feel like we see at the level of action yes. a lot. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 I would say 95% of people's action is based on getting a respond. Mm -hmm. So when you look, for example, I, I, was, I was talking a while ago with before the um, orgasmic meditation just like went down south because they had so many accusations about, about abuse and abusive behavior because this, the stroker mm -hmm. um, who is just actually providing a little bit of action is getting so much gratification about what is happening on the strokey. Mm -hmm. And it's getting lost. And this is what I've seen in many times, getting lost in the respond mm -hmm. rather than being present within themselves. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm. All right. Okay, let's stop here. Let's have another kind of few minutes of a check out. That was awesome. Good. <laughs> I feel like I can say more intelligent things, but my brain is still a, like kind of in like the whir mode. It goes up there, like your ventilator on the seat. <laughs> right. It's like. <laughs> um, yeah. Like I can see all of the potential applications. Hmm. Um, and I really appreciate the, the, the nuance of the connection, right? Like starting with the nervous system and starting with the way the brain is wired, because I think we spend so much time, so much of our attention on the correction of the behavior, mm -hmm. right? In a way that has people overriding their nervous systems and not starting with like compassion for like the location where you begin. Um, so yeah, I'm just deeply curious. I can imagine that, that uh, every element of this has an expanded version. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, it's, it's super exciting. It's super exciting to have some new language for it. And um, it was just exactly, exactly the thing that I was looking for. Perfect. <laughs> So um, and the interesting thing is, um, I mean, the entire structure about that is I'm very passionate about that. I love to talk. And, you know, my, my entire last five years of uh, in-life workshopping has been on this level. And I love sharing that stuff. And I see people kind of popping up and just like, oh, my God, no. I have... Actually, this is, this is the structure. So I just created that. I have a, have a kind of bigger picture about that as well. And, um, but the main thing is, this waking up the hands and pleasure in the hands. So mm -hmm. I just created an app for that and, um, and, and it's kind of just like, so, so people need to find back to that. Otherwise it's just like they're getting stuck in their brain, in their head. It's like if people can't feel, then sorry, that's, that's not going to happen. Yeah, and I mean, I, it's something that has been reflected to me a lot in, in um, physical intimacy right, sort of like the gift of my hands or, or like the things that I'm able to find. But it, it happens because I'm feeling it for myself, Yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Rather than like, oh, what's the thing that you want? I just kind of follow like the, the sensation yeah. that's happening for me. And if I do that, it finds things that connect to them, right? Yeah, yeah. The intention is different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just like talk about that when we just, the kind of, uh, so, so this indirect route, I call that the neurological feedback loop. Mm 
you mm-hmm. know it's just like yeah sure without that it's just like it's just boring just like you know then, 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 you, then you can just like uh, touch a rubber doll uh, and just pretend you're just having a good time on them then what's what's it's 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 the missing piece of connection if you just only touch a rubber doll in the direct route so this indirect route is really important so we need that to co-regulate we need that to self-regulate on others and we need that to feel more with others but the point is that when we're getting lost on the other person then it's literally the negation so it's just like Use it as a bonus and an extra, but stay fully connected to your direct route in the most healthy way. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. That was great. Uh, one second, please. No yeah, I'm, I'm just done in five minutes. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was it in the, in the, short, in the short box. Uh, okay. Would you like to have that as a video? I would love to have the video um, and I will ask, are you okay if I share the video? Absolutely share it. Okay. And is there any invitation that you would like to make to the people that I share it with? Um, yes, I have, um, but it doesn't really fit because it's the European time. Um, I have on the 29th a free webinar coming up, pleasure in your hands, one and a half hour at one o'clock European time, it's seven o'clock in the morning in the US in your time zone. <laughs> I can People are up at 7 a.m. <laughs> I can send you the link. Let's see who's showing up. That's perfect. I would yeah. love to share that. All right. So uh, thanks for reaching out. Make the best out of it and um, good luck with your work. Awesome, Matthias. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. All right. Bye. All right. Ciao.